fellow munchkins and viewers alike, it's me Munchie and today I wish to share with you guys my biggest hamster mistakes. So this video is no way shaming me or anybody else about these mistakes we have done because we learn from our mistakes and the community for hamsters keeps growing. We keep learning new information and we keep improving our hamsters environment. But I hope this video does help out any new hammy owners out there as well as just to get a nice take about my experiences because we're all human here and we make mistakes. As well as if you guys see anything in our community right now that is not good, let's also try to come together to help one another out rather than shame each other. Because mistakes happen. People don't know. So let's not be little a-holes and help one another out. So let me get into my biggest mistakes. Number one, I did my research, which I'm very happy about because when I got a hamster, my mother told me I need to do research and I was willing to do that research too. Unfortunately, the books were outdated. Yeah, back in the early 2000s is when I got my first hamster. I was around the ages of 10 to 11 and my first hamster's name was Sunshine. Sunshine was a long hair Syrian hamster. And unfortunately, these books did not talk about the environment and the cage sizes back then. So I got myself a very tiny cage. That was mistake number two. I just did not know better. Those books did not tell me a darn thing except for what they basically needed, which was somewhere they won't escape that you can enjoy them from. Food, water, chew toys, wheel, bedding, hides, and basic stuff like that. So when I did get a cage, it was a critter trail. I don't know what's up with the United States of America only having critter trails in their pet stores, but that was the only option at that time because it was the norm to have a wired cage for a hamster. I'm so glad we don't really do that anymore. And for people wondering why critter trails are not good cages and why I'm calling them tiny cages, is because they don't meet the minimum requirements, which the pet community has stated should be 360 or above. Lately, people have said the minimum should be 450 square inch and above, and I can definitely say yes to that, just because the bigger the better. So dwarfs do best in 360 and above, from my experience, and Syrians in 450 and above. But anyways, critter trails are obviously way smaller than that. I think a critter trail is around 260 square inches, which is very tiny. Besides critter trails being way too small and tiny for your hamsters, mistake number three happened where I housed the Syrian in that and when my Syrian grew, oh, his top came off. Because the critter trail had a compartment, like a little hideaway or bed area up top, that's where he liked to go to sleep. So when I was sleeping, I woke up to this noise. So he was way too big, as well as number four mistake, I had the wrong size wheel for him. Now he was a very small hamster. And male hamsters are actually a lot smaller than female hamsters. Reason why you want the right size wheel is because you wanna make sure their back is completely straight while they run on it. Anything that curves is not okay can actually damage and shorten your hamster's life. Now, I did have a winter white dwarf hamster that had a small temporary wheel, but that was about it. It was just a temporary wheel until the bigger size came in at my pet store. But that was the last time I had a very small wheel because I learned right then and there that you do not want to have a small wheel for your hamster. You want your hamster to have a big wheel. So the fifth mistake here I had with my Syrian hamster again, my little sunshine, and that was seed slash pine bedding. I don't remember which one I used. I think it was cedar. Now with cedar and pine bedding, these beddings have toxins in the wood that actually seep out and could cause your hamster respiratory issues. So it's best to have safe wood shavings in your enclosure if you choose to use wood. Now the safe wood that is out there is aspen bedding. It can look like shaved wood cedar bedding and they might get confused, but not many people know aspen is good wood. It is the safe alternative but personally, I like to use paper. Now, the sixth one that I have to share with you guys is one that I'm so glad none of my hamsters ever had to experience, except for, of course, sunshine, was cotton balls, or cotton that comes in those tubes you find at the store, or just cotton fluff, because it can be titled that as well, where it is supposed to be nesting material. However, when hamsters go to put it in their mouths to carry it to their nest, they actually could get that very fine cotton wrapped around inside and in their intestines and they could swallow it. Unfortunately, there has been cases out there that have caused death. So that's why people 
highly do not recommend putting cotton balls in your hamster's enclosures. I did that. I bought the fluff and thankfully I never bought the fluff again. Now the seventh biggest mistake that I made was taking my hamsters out during the day. Now they are supposed to be night dwellers. They like to come out in the night, run on their wheel, or for my Roboroski here, he likes to come out dawn and dusk. That's completely fine to him. Sometimes you might catch him rise the sun setting, which is nice. And sometimes you can catch him in the morning right before he goes to bed. Now, unfortunately, as a child, I want to show off my hamster to like two of my friends and I want to interact with my hamster because of course I'm a little kid. I want them out when I am awake, not when I have to go to bed at like nine o'clock at night. That was horrible. But as a kid, I just didn't know this very well, even though I did know that, oh, hey, they're nocturnal. They come out at night. It just didn't click in my head that, hey, you don't want people waking you up while you sleep. Why should I do it to my hamster? So whoopsies. Now the eighth one and last one that I made a mistake on was bathing my hamster in water. Hold on before you guys comment or say, oh my God, what happened? My little sunshine developed skin cancer and cancer is actually very common in hamsters. They either die from tumors that grow on their body or in this case, I've never actually seen this after this hamster, but my hamster developed these patches of just like they're scabs. They're just the biggest scabs and they were all over my poor hamster's back and I felt so bad, which I took my hamster to the vet and found out it was cancer. So I think that at the time the doctor said that I needed to clean them off or that uh, it's something to do with like cleaning. I have to make sure that they are cleaned before I put medication on. So that's why just for whatever reason, one of my memories has me where I'm actually gently holding my hamster while running like lukewarm water over his spots there before I gave him his cream ointment. Don't do anything like that. If your doctor says do it, do it. However, I would have done things differently. I would have just taken a cotton ball and I would have ran it under lukewarm water and just carefully wiped his little scab spots before applying the cream on him. Because with hamsters, they need to have something like a sand bath. Not a dust bath, that's completely different and actually bad for them, but a sand bath. And that is to just help maintain their coat so it's not too greasy because natural oils are good for your hamster to have. So unfortunately, my first hamster did happen to get a lot of my mistakes. However, in the years that followed, I did do a few more mistakes like the bedding, as well as the small wheel, which I knew was gonna be a temporary thing until a bigger wheel came in. But after that, I pretty much learned very quickly, did my research, went online, looked things up, and I remember my second hamster, my Robo, which was Robo Roski, he had a critter shell cage first, and then I upgraded him to a 360 bin, which he was much happier with, and I'm very happy about that and here I am in the present still learning still thinking of ways to improve to enrich my hamsters so there we are my biggest mistakes now I am not proud of my mistakes I feel so bad but I hope this video has helped people out there understand that this is what we got to work with when we were you know in the 80s and the 90s growing up because we don't have things like the internet today so that was another big thing that really helped the pet community as as well as the hamster community grow is that our knowledge, our experience grew when the internet did. So I'm very thankful that the internet's here to help. I know it could be damaging sometimes, but I'm glad that we do have the internet so we can learn about these things. And look at cute hamster videos. I mean, come on, it's very fun watching Vanilla Ham Ham and Hopping Hammy and all those great people out there who make hamster videos and theme cages and education videos. So thank you guys so much I hope you enjoyed and if you did hit like to show your support comment down below with your biggest hammy mistakes down below no shame it's fun to share it's fun to know at least we can all learn and appreciate that hey this is a stepping stone we are now in a better place than we were back then especially when we were children and if you like what you see please subscribe and become a part of my munchkin family so thank you everyone and have a wonderful rest of your day bye, -bye.